then will be followed by the rest of the leaders. So we are watching the convoys uh, coming in now with all the VIPs from all the various uh, delegations um, as we prepare for the photo uh, opportunities before the first session of the ASEAN Korea Summit. Let's quickly bring in our Unification Ministry correspondent, Oh Jung Hee, uh, who can perhaps talk us through uh, some of the faces we are seeing uh, today. This is the third ASEAN Korea commemorative uh, summit. There's a lot of history behind this. So we are seeing here uh, Rim Jok Hoi, who is the, uh, the head of uh, ASEAN, the Secretary General of ASEAN. Up next, Jongi, I think we have the leader of uh, Thailand coming in. Uh, that's uh, according to the schedule anyway, but uh, President Moon Jae-in is waiting there patiently as uh, the leaders will start coming in. And we're seeing the second uh, convoy coming in now. According to the schedule we have been provided with this is the Prime Minister of Thailand, uh, Prayut Chan O Cha, and his uh, rest of his delegation uh, from Thailand. There he is himself. He came to power. He is a, a general, of course, uh, came to power a few years ago. Uh, so there we see President Moon and um Thailand's Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha standing together for the photo op. They obviously had the summit yesterday um, where um, they agreed to boost bilateral ties and they will be sitting down again for the multilateral summit that's to continue on until tomorrow, which is uh, Korea Mekong commemorative summit um, in which four countries, um, including Laos, uh, Myanmar and Vietnam, also Thailand, of course, will be participating. Yeah, that's going to be a big part of this summit process as well. It's the first Mekong Republic of Korea uh, summit uh, to ever take uh, place. And it's really going to be centered on uh, how uh, the two sides can focus on peace and prosperity as well as uh, paving the way for mutual growth between the two sides. Quite a rainy day there in Busan, unfortunately, uh, but still at least, uh, you know, the weather apart from that isn't that bad. Um, uh, bringing you back in, Professor Im, yes. while we uh, mm -hmm. uh, await the next uh, convoy, which I believe is from uh, Vietnam. Mm. Quickly, where do you think relations stand today after 30 years of ties between South Korea and ASEAN? Uh, the relations between the ROK, Republic of Korea, and the ASEAN, the 10 country, it has been substantially increasingly growing over the thir three decades. Compared to probably the relations between Japan, for example, Japan and ASEAN, it might have been older and uh, it might have been, for some senses, uh, deeper, more comprehensive. But within this only three decades, I mean, South Korea, again, uh, I think, showed a really significant contribution to the region. Uh, the friendship uh, between the two uh, has been, again, dramatically um, grown up. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now we are looking at the Prime Minister of Vietnam uh, getting out of his vehicle, Prime Minister Wen Shun Phuc. Uh, he is about to meet with President Moon Jae-in. Uh, big growth uh, mm -hmm. economy there in Vietnam. They have uh, an economic growth record most countries would be extremely envious mm -hmm. of. So uh, Korea surely uh, looking to build up ties with Vietnam. So we see the leader of Vietnam uh, go into the conference hall. Next up will be the Sultan of Brunei, mm -hmm. uh, Jungi. Uh, so this is the third uh, summit of this type. Uh, do, what do you think about the meaning of this yourself after uh, I asked a similar question to the professor? Mm -hmm. Well, it's been 30 years since South Korea and ASEAN established dialogue partnership. They first um, established a sectoral dialogue partnership in 19. Um, 89 and since then 30 years have passed so this commemorative summit we have in Busan has a significance because um, the two sides are both celebrating their 30 years of ties which um, is obviously going to head towards establishing a strategic partnership in the near future.
Okay, we're looking at the Sultan of Brunei, as I said. Hassan al Bolkia is his name, mm -hmm. uh, one of the wealthiest mm -hmm. men in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the Sultan, um, Hassan al Bolkia, has had a summit with President Moon mm. on uh, two days ago, a couple of days ago, actually, at the presidential office in Seoul. And he actually drove, he actually um, flew his own mm -hmm. um, private jet to mm. Busan himself. Wow. He okay. actually used to be the pilot in, uh, at Brunei's Air Force. So apparently we know that he took his private jet and he <laughs> flew it by himself. Okay, well, they're coming in thick and fast now. Now we have the representative from Cambodia. Mm -hmm. uh, he is the foreign minister and uh, deputy prime minister. The actual prime minister, unfortunately, had a, a family matter that he had to deal with at uh, home. So that gentleman there will be re representing Cambodia at the uh, summit today. And he, of course, will be involved in the uh, Mekong summit when that uh, takes place as well so that south korea has established a special strategic partnership mm. with so mm. that's one thing to note um and uh, uh the the leaders of indonesia and south korea have had the summit they held the summit yesterday mm. and which also came at the same time with the two sides concluding mm. their comprehensive economic mm. partnership agreement which obviously opts to um boost their bilateral trade volume and Indonesia will be opening up its market for 93 percent of South Korean products and uh, two sides are aiming to sign the deal officially sign the deal in the first half of uh, next year so that's really the reason why we should be keeping our eyes on mm. uh, Indonesia which is the biggest country in the Southeast Asian mm. um, part of the world yes and President uh, Widodo as well obviously uh, delighted because he recently won uh, re-election mm. in uh, Indonesia uh, as well. So big smiles from the leaders there. We're around halfway through mm. the leaders that will be making their way into the summit. Next up is the Prime Minister of Laos. Okay, well, I think now we are finally seeing the Prime Minister of Laos. He is next on the list. Yes, that's the, the Laotian flag on that vehicle mm. there. Prime Minister Sisaluth Song Lung is about to get out of the vehicle there, mm. landlocked country in Southeast Asia, one of the poorest members mm. of ASEAN, of course, but that's not to say they're not rich in natural resources mm. and uh, mm. if they can work closely with the kind of technological uh, mm. uh, ability South Korea has, potentially their economy could see a real boom from mm. that. So there we see South Korea's President Moon Jae-in and Laotian Prime Minister um, Sisulith Tonglun standing together for the photo op. They will uh, be having a bilateral summit later in the day after the commemorative summit ends and after they're done with a joint press conference as well. Okay, well, he left uh, President Moon hanging a, <laughs> a little bit longer than the other leaders. Well, it's important to note as well that there are tens of thousands of uh, mm. students Mm. from Southeast Asian mm. nations studying mm. here in South Korea and potentially uh, they could be the leaders of the future and take their experiences uh, back home with them. So we are looking at the Malaysian delegation uh, pool in now. Malaysia is an up and coming country in Southeast Asia. There's no denying that. There has been a recent history of corruption, of course, which has gripped the country. Uh, Oh, in fact, in oh, yeah, fact, that's uh, Myanmar. Yes. That's a state councillor, mm -hmm. Aung San Suu Kyi, the only woman mm -hmm. uh, leader at uh, the proceedings today, not without controversy herself, but she was a former uh, Nobel Peace Prize winner, of course. So uh, good to see her uh, making her way into the uh, summit venue. Perhaps now we are looking at the, that appears to be the Malaysian flag, mm -hmm, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, the Myanmar leader came in uh, ahead of schedule and now we're looking at the Prime Minister of Malaysia making his way into uh, the uh, venue. And then after him, we'll have two more. Uh, the President of the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte, and then Singapore Prime Minister Li uh, Xianlong will be coming in. Okay, there's the pri uh, Prime Minister of Malaysia wrapped up 
uh, nice and warm. Perhaps he's not used to <laughs> uh, the cold temperatures we have here in, in uh, South Korea at this time of the year. But we're getting close to the point where this summit is going to uh, start. Okay, we can see the Singaporean flag on uh, that motorcade. So this is the leader of Singapore. Uh, so the final leader to come today will be the leader of uh, the Philippines. Uh, there he is, the Prime Minister of Singapore. Li Xiang Lung, which is a huge economy, not only in Asia, but uh, in the world mm -hmm. uh, in general, a financial hub of uh, fantastic importance to everyone, especially a time of uh, uncertainty in uh, Hong Kong, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. And uh, making his entrance, perhaps fashion fashionably late, uh, <laughs> he is a controversial leader, of course, but well loved in his home country by a lot of people. Uh, it does have some rather controversial uh, policies, however. Uh, but uh, Rodrigo Duterte uh, is making his way into uh, the summit venue. Professor Im, mm -hmm. uh, what do you make of uh, how South Korea should approach relationships uh, with uh, Philippines at this time? Well, Philippines um, traditionally is, of course, uh, is a one important country of uh, U.S.-centered, probably security strategic um, order, the death structure. Of course, South Korea, Japan, and Taiwan used to be one of them too, and the Philippines in that sense, um, of course, strategically importantly located. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to be too harsh about uh, um, their own domestic policy uh, or domestic politics because that's their probably own decision. Uh, but strategically speaking, I would say uh, Philippines that location um, and its potential for the future developments are definitely important for yeah. South Korea too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes, mm -hmm. he is the democratically elected mm -hmm. uh, pr uh, president of the Philippines. So the people there uh, chose him because they like his uh, policies and we respect uh, the people of the Philippines for their choice on that matter. So President Moon is escorting the leader of the Philippines into the summit venue. We're about to see this uh, first session of the uh, ASEAN Republic of Korea Summit 2019 commemorative summit, 30 years <laughs> of uh, ties between the Two sides. So this is a huge deal. New Southern policy is because this really is a signature uh, policy for his administration now. Right. So President Moon has two pillars in terms of um, achieving peace and prosperity on the Korean Peninsula, and those two are new Northern policy and new Southern policy. And new Southern policy, this one opts to. Um, strengthen South Korea's ties with ASEAN countries and India to the level that South Korea um, has with the United States, um, China, Japan, and Russia. And this is because South Korea, uh, Southeast Asian countries are the economic powerhouse of Asia um, because their consumer market is growing at a at an annual pace of 15%, um, their middle class is expected to grow by fivefold until by 2030. And uh, the, the countries there, they've been, you know, growing. Uh, their e their economy has been growing by uh, by an average of five percent every year, which is very high, um, considering the uh, considering the economic situation around the world. Um, okay, so what we're mm -hmm. looking at now mm -hmm. is uh, President Moon Jae-in mm -hmm. and the leaders of uh, the nine uh, ASEAN nations that are there, as well as the Secretary General of ASEAN. Uh, joining hands in an, uh, a show of solidarity between uh, South Korea and uh, ASEAN and they're about to enter discussions along with their delegations so it's going to be interesting to see what is going to come out of this meeting as our EGU reported uh, at the top of this newscast we are expecting a statement on what they are going to be discussing uh, very soon indeed.
So, uh, Zhang Yi touched upon President Moon Jae-in's new southern policy. Yes. And as we watch the leaders uh, go in for the talks, Professor Im, I'd like to bring you back into the conversation. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we are now uh, slightly more than halfway through President Moon's five-year term. Mm -hmm. How do you rate this, the success or otherwise of his new southern policy towards ASEAN thus far? Mm -hmm. Um, as uh, Ms. O uh, previously mentioned, you know, his uh, President Moon's uh, diplomatic policy uh, can be um, conceptualized in the new economic map of the uh, Korean Peninsula you know, through the peace process. And the, that the new economic map is composed of the two pillars, again, the new northern and the new southern policy. Uh, very unfortunately, um, northern, new northern policy um, is not, cannot just move on uh, without any improvement um, uh, in the uh, denuclearization process mm -hmm. of North Korea, uh, which is pretty unfortunate from our point of view. Mm -hmm. So as long as, again, we don't see very significant progress um, as of now, again, in, in denuclearization process of North Korea, um, again, I think uh, this is a right choice, again, to focus on um, um, South, Southern, New Southern policy, ASEAN countries, or more reliable uh, partners in emerging market countries. So um, even though we might not have seen very um, significant uh, policy outcomes for the last couple of years, uh, because again, he has more focused on the yeah, news. Excuse me, uh, oh, uh, sorry. Uh -huh. I'm going to have to jump in because President sure. Moon Jae-in is about oh, to yeah. make a few mm -hmm. remarks. So let's listen in. And now we will begin. Distinguished leaders of ASEAN member states, I'm delighted to see you all here in Busan, the marine capital city of Korea. Korea has four distinct seasons. We are now entering into winter, and I hope that you are experiencing a new season from your countries. First of all, I would like to congratulate Prime Minister Prayut of Thailand on the successful hosting of the ASEAN Plus 3 Summit. And my special thanks also go to Sultan of Brunei Bolkia for his role as the leader of the country coordinator for Korea ASEAN dialogue relations. In 1989, Korea ASEAN dialogue relation was established based on the wisdom of our respective leaders. ASEAN and Korea have made a relationship of co-prosperity by preparing for the era of Asia and the Pacific. I highly praise our cooperation, which has now been expanded to all areas of politics, security, society, and culture, moving beyond economy and commerce. We were able to overcome the East Asian financial crisis and the global financial crisis based on the power of trust and relationship we have made so far. ASEAN is Korea's valuable partner. Right after my inauguration, my administration has dispatched a special envoy to ASEAN. We also announced the new southern policy to build together a people-centered community of peace and prosperity. I was the first South Korean president to visit all 10 ASEAN member states in just two years. The presidential special committee for new Southern policy was established. The Korea ASEAN Cooperation Fund was doubled this year. The ASEAN Culture Center was established here in Busan to intensify our cultural cooperation with ASEAN. During the past 30 years, trade volume jumped 20 folds, investment by 70 folds, personnel exchange by over 40 times between Korea and ASEAN. Now we have become indispensable friends and we are materializing our dreams one by one together. An inclusive and sustainable world is, is now dependent on the cooperation of Asia. Our goal will be the hopes for all humanity going beyond Asia. Based on the past achievements that we have made so far, I sincerely hope that we can open the door for new cooperation towards the future. Distinguished leaders, 
We are currently faced with new challenges, including trade protectionism, transnational crimes, and fourth industrial revolution. We can overcome such challenges only with our cooperation and solidarity. In particular, no one knows for clear what future the fourth industrial revolution era would bring. We need to further strengthen our cooperation and solidarity. In the next 30 years ahead, we need to intensify our relationship and become a mutual community through which we walk towards peace together and prosper together. The 21st century is an era for Asia. The Asian spirit of inclusion of nature, people, and nation is the wisdom that can be shared with the rest of the world. When Korea and ASEAN, who share such spirits, come together as one, we can definitely transform challenges into new successes. Busan is the gateway where the continent meets the sea. I hope that ASEAN and Korea can become one here in Busan. Thank you very much.